Hi guys, so today we're going to ask a different question. How to build a technical sales team. So imagine that you've been given the opportunity to step up from being a regular Joe sales guy to being a sales manager. So you've had an opportunity to open your company or maybe you've moved companies and you've now got the opportunity to manage a sales team. The first thing you need to do, obviously, is build the sales team by hiring people. So the usual rules apply when you're looking for hires. You go to LinkedIn, you use recruiters, they're a necessary evil when it comes to building a team. Or you go through a website like Indeed. So you'll be looking at CVs as they come in, and generally I'll start by saying every potential candidate starts at 100%. Little niggles that come off the overall experience drop that percentage. So say they've got uh, some spelling errors in their CV or the formatting is incorrect or it's five pages long. All of these little things will drop the percentage down and the whole feel of the candidate becomes less and less. Say they're late for the interview, um, say they're stuttering and stumbling, haven't prepared the background about the company. So try and go for candidates that you have a good feel about. Just remember you can train them in the technical, they'll take a set amount of, of time depending on their aptitude, but if they're not a good person, not a good cultural fit for the company, then there's no point in hiring them. Also remember, when you bring new people into the team, you're going to be not only affecting having a, uh, their performance affect the overall team's performance, but other members of the team will be affected by this new dynamic, this new energy in the team. So remember that the traditional um, acronym of sales, always be closing, is not true anymore. We're in a buyer-centric market where the buyers decide what product they want, what service they want, then reach out to a salesperson to facilitate the sale. So ABC, would, I would argue, now stands for always be caring, always be considerate, and always be customer focused. So look for these things in a person. Don't look for somebody where they're very much brash, transactional sales, just get the deal done and then whatever, screw the customer, it doesn't care anymore. This is not something you want in today's sales environment. You want somebody who's kind, caring and considerate, puts the customer first, because guess what guys? They're gonna rebuy from you time after time again, so you're gonna build a successful relationship. So when you get the candidate for interview, um, obviously they're gonna be a little bit nervous, so account for that. Um, but look at their overall presentation style. Just get a good feel or intuition whether you want to work with them and then ask your team around you whether they want to work with them. So I once had a candidate who came to an interview day on her birthday um, and travelled three hours each way to get there and that gave me an indication that she really wanted the job and she was worth training and, and mentoring into the position. And it turned out she was a great candidate because she put the F in at the initial stage. So the hiring process is the first part. Um, we can talk more about that, but essentially hire good, kind people who will do well for your customers and then your customers will do well for you. It is, there is a skill to hiring people, so remember that C's hire C's, B's hire B's, it takes A's to hire A's. So you'll have to practice and you may get the odd hire that you're not so sure about. But remember, those people can still be developed. Okay, so you've hired somebody onto the team. Now we'll move on to part two, how to develop them. So whatever you do as a sales manager, do not just leave your employees to make their own way and you know make their own mistakes. You need to mentor them, train them, be there for them on a daily basis. Um, and too many people are afraid of bringing good people in and having them supposedly excel or exceed your own performance. This is totally incorrect. You should have your staff working for you that actually improve the overall team's performance. If they're better than you at a certain element, like the, maybe the deep dive technical knowledge of the software, the product, the service, whatever you're selling, then they're an asset to your team. Remember, team members are complementary, so you may have one that's very commercial and he or she can go out and just do deals like that, negotiate very easily, and the other one may be very technically strong in software, can, um, position your product portfolio better. So remember to hire team members that are complementary. 
what you should do with your team when you've got them on board is follow a, a very thoughtful and considerate onboarding process. So provide them with a, a physical pack of information about the company, what their role is, what's expected of them. Touch base with them every day if possible, every couple of days. I would also suggest um, asking them to write a report each month, uh, only a couple of pages, just so you can track their activity. But in reality, that's more for them in order to uh, allow them to look back on how they progress and how build their confidence over time. So what you need to do really is, is take the approach of mentoring people and growing them. So imagine your, your staff are like your, your flowers in your garden. You're going to feed them, you're going to water them with resources, but you also need to expose them to sunlight. Okay, So the sunlight, in the case of the, of the business, is giving them credit and allowing them to shine throughout the wider company. So if your staff do well, shout about it. You know, send an email to the CEO saying, look what they've achieved. You know, people are always scared of doing this in case they're outshone by one of their employees. If they do well, you do well. So make sure that you champion their accomplishments. They'll feel good. And as they grow in the role, they'll remember that and they'll always be loyal to you. So you'll build a team within the company as you hire more and more people throughout your career that are loyal to you and will work well with you. They'll want to work for you because they know that you've championed them. There's also a question about whether you bring on board people who are brand new in the role, straight out of academia or university. Usually if it's technical sales, they perhaps have some technical training. Or if you bring on the salesperson who's experienced. And a lot of companies like to bring on the experienced salesperson. And if you look at these guys' CVs, they are two years in one company, then another 18 months, and then a year in another company. And they know how to sell, um, but they do these two-year stints. Advantage of that is you don't need to train them as much because they already know how to negotiate, close a deal, etc., etc. Disadvantages: there's no loyalty, and they're probably happy to um, work for you for a few months, maybe a year. If it doesn't work out, they'll jump to the next company. They're also more likely to be set in their ways. So I, I would suggest, and it's more work up front, guys. But I would hire people who are newer to the role, who've got good value system still inside them, train them technically, train them commercially, and they'll end up being trained in the way that you want to sell, which might be ethical sales, um, it might be a uh, customer first approach, they won't have any bad habits instilled on them. The downside is it'll take 12, maybe 18 months to get someone who's very green to generating more revenue than they cost the company, so for them to be in a, a net surplus. So. Um, I'll probably finish there for this, this video. Um, yeah, remember, hire good people, mentor them, train them daily, champion their accomplishments, and you'll build a loyal, um, customer-focused sales team that generate revenue and have customers singing their praises all day long. That's it for me. Um, I'm going to take a swim, so I'll catch, catch you in the next bit, guys.